Hello you multi, milieu manufacturing millennials and thank you to Willem Killian for that malt mention introducing here in the Bothy, let's move this out of the way for safety, Ralphie Review 915 Extras in which having reviewed a single malt whisky or any other quality spirit I'm now giving you more generalised information which I believe in my experience is going to be helpful and useful in empowering your experience and in particular in identifying what is good value for money and in narrowing down your purchasing list as to what are good whiskies. Where do you get good whiskies? Um, and excuse me a second, I, I had a poll on my um, Patreon channel, Ralphie, R A L F Y, and Patreon, um, for my subscribers there, uh, giving about nine options for a topic for a live stream. I do a biannual, a dry, sorry, bi monthly live stream. And the topic was signs of a good distillery because quite simply, if you know the signs of a good distillery, you know the signs of a good malt because that's what these distilleries produce. Uh, and basically what I did was I itemised it into the mission statements that the distillery managers engage with, how they conduct their business and the principles by which they, they set their standards. Uh, the grain, yeast, fermentation, yields, distillation protocols, cask policies, warehousing, bottle integ bottling integrity, promotional integrity, quality of rapport with customers and consumers. And also the effect of this is supply and demand and quite simply, one of the best base indicators of the signs of a good distillery is when there's high demand for their product, it's getting talked about regularly online and um, it's when it goes on sale it doesn't tend to hang about in shelves gathering dust. You see the thing is, and I don't understand the economic thoughts about this, where some distilleries will bottle inferior versions of their whisky and present them in inferior versions and they put the bottles out there and then they sit for months if not years on shelves in shops and that is basically your cash flow tied up for a very long period of time and frankly that's no use. Cash flow and liquidity is the lifeblood of any business. I run a business, I know this to be true. And if you are producing mediocre bottlings when you don't even have to and they're sitting in shelves, you're just relying on the ignorance of consumers and the misguided goodwill that the purchaser has towards the integrity of the producer that the bottles are going to sell and then you're going to get your money. But you walk into any spirits shop there are the spirits that sell fast, the big demand, and then there's others that don't. They sit and they linger. Now, two reasons for that is people are just maybe not aware of it. And another reason is blind loyalty to certain brands which used to be good, but now are become increasingly mediocre. And the price does not reflect the quality of what's in the bottle. But I'm going to stick with the fact that many reasons one, for, for, in many situations, the reason that a whisky sits on a shelf for a long, long time, gathering dust, taking up space for the retailer, not appealing to the customer, even, even when it goes on special offer, is because of the mediocre presentation. And it's not just of the whisky, it's of the integrity of presentation. It's, it's of the honesty of presentation. If people look at something and it looks cheesy and flippant, that's the way people are, people are going to in, interpret it. If it's full of humor, humorness, humor, right, and given a daft name, people will walk past it because they think it's a daft product. Um, but the, the internet changes everything. It really does. It's not just the proactive whiskey customer 
who spends time sifting through online reviews to find out what is the best compared to the rest. It's the more passive consumer now who's bought something and just been disappointed and doesn't know why. And time and time again, I hear from people that I know, you know, in, out with the whiskey scene, oh yeah, you're the whiskey guy and I bought a bottle of such and such a brand and it's not what it used to be. It's just not as good as I remember it back in the old days. And do you know what? They're right. They're absolutely right. You know, there, there are good whiskies out there, but there's also whiskies which, which are not good and there's no reason why they shouldn't be. It's all down to the policy. It's all down to the integrity. And it's all down to the business practicality and, and competency, really, of the owners of distilleries and some independent bottlers. It's an issue. It's, if, you know, it's interesting that with nine options, this is the one thing that experienced whiskey drinkers wanted discussed in a, a live stream, was signs of a good distillery. And, and if you're talking about a good distillery, you might as well be talking also about the signs of a bad distillery. Uh, so I'll just rattle off a few signs for a bad, of a bad distillery. Bottles of whiskey that need to be discounted and heavily marketed to sell. In other words, the money that the distillers, when they were producing the whiskey, should have spent in quality casks to get good results. But they didn't. They trimmed the sales. They said, you know, the owner said, no, this is your budget this year. Uh, so, you know, we can just, we'll, we'll cover it over with marketing. Yeah, the marketing doesn't work. So the marketing team, very well paid people, by the way, they're out and about banging the drum and people are listening to the script and they're saying, I can hear that from any distillery. This is getting boring. That's the signs of a bad distillery. When you don't have faith in the product, but you look at the brand and say, well, which one am I choose? Which is the best one that's available? Is it really, have you really got to say that to yourself about any brand? It just shouldn't be the case. They should all be competent. Not every whiskey can be five star. But every whiskey can be three and a half stars plus and four. Every whiskey can be. There's no excuse for two star whiskies, one star whiskies, zero star whiskies. No excuse for it at all. And we're seeing that in some blends. The quality of some blends, I'm noticing, it's just terrible. And this is why I avoid them now. Occasionally I taste them. I'm in a bar. Oh, Ralphie, what do you think of this? And I'm handed a, a fairly prominent heavily promoted marketing blend and it's not good it's chemically that's why i would describe it chemically the signs of a bad distillery indifferent and lazy management poor cask policy unmotivated staff constant co cost cutting harassment of staff to do extra for to basically earn their corn, quote unquote, um, heavy marketing, use of consultants, blingy bottles, showy packaging, all costs money. And then these contracts, these poor return contracts where you've got to sell so much of a volume of your product to secure the contract on very, very specific terms and conditions with great big multiple outlet retailers, some in the real world and some online. And eventually you get paid for your product and then they decide if they're going to discount it or not. And you don't get much of a say in the matter. So they discount your brand and it makes it look cheaper because it is cheaper because it's been cheapened. Sign of a bad distillery. Sign of a good distillery. Glencadam, Arran, Ardnamarkin. Springbank, Glengyle. All you have to do is look at the good distilleries and then say, right, what other distilleries do it their way? Which other distilleries out there produce whiskey properly? Which other kiss, which other, you know, there's going to be a website soon that comes along with a grading system that does an annual review based on, on, on numbers and actually rates every single Scotch whisky distillery in terms of competency and delivery. 
That's not my channel. But in the next generation, that, that will get a huge audience. A huge audience. Ultimately, people come along to a whiskey channel to be mildly entertained and mildly informed and all the rest of it. And a wee bit of virtual company when you're on your own in the house with a wee dram. But there's another more important reason that people come along. And that is because the people really want to know. Whiskey fans really, really want to know that their next purchase of whiskey for the money they pay is not going to be a huge, catastrophic disappointment that leaves them feel cheated and robbed. This is why we always go out there and we look for the signs of a good distillery. Because a good distillery will not do that to us. They will not commercially harm us. They will endorse us with the quality of what they produce and the price at which they deliver it to us. And fair enough, prices will go up when it's small distilleries and demand outstrips supply. That's market forces and there's nothing we can do about it, malt mates. I'm just sharing. Hope you found this interesting. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And click a wee likey. And if you dislike it, you know, click that as well. I don't care. <laughs> really, I don't. And um, if you're interested in my Patreon channel, go along to patreon.com. There's a link underneath in the description. And check it out. Um, I don't I don't ask much, just buy Ralph a wee dram per month, um, a cheap dram will do, and uh, join the additional conversation with the extra videos. Bye!